John to the five to ten KJV his mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw it now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, But the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. It is interesting to know that only very small, insignificant people are aware of the times we are in today. All the indices on the ground and activities of the operators of the kingdom of darkness are confirming the end of times are here while they are preparing. And you will preserve your lives in the name of Jesus. He will keep you safe in your going out, in your coming in. You shall be blessed. And whatever you lay your hands on, because you have honored him this afternoon for coming for this meeting, God will bless it in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. Even God appreciates you even much more than I do. Because he's the one that invited you, not me. I always tell you that I am too small to invite you. Even TikTok is too small to invite you. They are doing their job. Excellent job. Big time for the great tribulation. nature and unconsciousness of the Christian body is not in good stead. As in the above scriptures, the mother of Jesus told the servants, however he tells you to do, do it, which means don't question him. Deuteronomy 139.40 KJV, moreover your little ones, which he said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it.
state of situation your life is, how sweet it is, or the challenges you are facing, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. If your life right now is very sweet, it can become sweeter. But as for you, turn you, and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. In the evil days we are in today, anyone who refuses to get knowledge and obey the instructions thereof will have to turn back into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. You remember what happened to them. Their carcasses were strewn all over the wilderness. History is about to repeat itself, and I pray you will not be a victim. Joshua 5 to 4 to 6 KJV, and this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came so forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. They already have an idea who is coming to occupy such and such positions. They already have an idea. So if you are going to have a relationship with this kind of God we are talking about, is it the high time you at least get to know him? For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. On TikTok, I talked about newlyweds. Young couple that meet a man and a woman. I'm not talking about male, male or female, male. I'm talking about man and woman that meet and they love each other. By the time they love each other, by the time they meet each other, they begin to ask questions about themselves, don't they? Oh, I, I love you, I love you, I love you, you are beautiful, you are nice. What's your name? Where do you live? What kind of job do you do? What's, uh, and to whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land, which the Lord swear unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. The wilderness of life is majorly for the disobedient ones and the adversaries love them in that position. Feelings they have towards that individual, whether male or female. Oh, he's is, is, is come from a rich family. Oh, his family is not too rich, but he has good pedigree. He has good education, background. He has a good job. He has, you know, they begin to probe. Then by the time they now say, okay, let's go and get married. They are no longer strangers to themselves. They probably would have known their families. Their families would have introduced themselves to themselves. There are spiritual and physical wilderness. None of it is desirable in these last days. If you don't want to be consigned to the wilderness, where the enemy will have a full sway over you, simply obey his commandments. And ultimately, they find an appointed time for the marriage. They fix a date. Because from the search and information that they have concerning themselves, 
they are satisfied. Hallelujah. It's then the family, both families now give a nod and say, go ahead and uh, yes, we, 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 have a, we have him as our son-in-law or we have her as our daughter-in-law. We, we, like, we love her. She's nice. She's this. Then they fix dates. If human beings are doing that to themselves, shouldn't you try and know this God you are serving? And your defense will be offensive against the adversary keeping them in darkness where they belong. Do have a peaceful weekend. AOD. If you don't know him, then you are not in a relationship with him. If you don't know him, and he himself doesn't even know you too, is a, is a, is, is a synergy relationship, symbiotic. It's synergy. God must know you. You also must know him. That's what I want to read for you in the book of Nahum, chapter 1 from verse 2 to 9. Give you an idea of the pedigree of the kind of God we are talking about. So, when you now put your faith and trust in Him, you go to sleep. When challenges come, and He says, don't worry, He says, don't do for you. You go to sleep. You don't even worry about anymore. But before you get to that level, you must know him. And when I say, when I have a topic like this, your life can be blissful. Who is going to make that life blissful despite the challenges you are facing right now? Right now, so many people's lives are looking very bleak, very unpromising. Like there's no future. Everything looks so dark, discouraging. Everything on ground. But this kind of God we are talking about is one that turns around situations, very bad situations to become very sweet and loving situation into great testimonies. This is the kind of God we are talking about. So it is high time everyone should begin to know him. You are sick on the bed. And you get in a dream, an angel applies, appears to you and says, don't worry, you'll be healed. Meanwhile, the doctors have told you that this sickness is terminal. You probably have a few days left or a few weeks left. But God appears to you through an angel in the dream, says, don't worry about that. Don't bother about the report of the doctor. You are healed. You are healed, you are, but the sickness they said you are healed from, is still in your body. But when you know this God, immediately you hear a statement like that, that is contrary to the doctor's report. Immediately you tear off the doctor's report and garbage it. Yet, the sickness is still in your body. You don't worry about it. You say, it's gone. That sickness is gone. You have said, I'm healed. I'm healed. That's the end of the matter. And that brings about, your knowing him brings about a strong faith in him, irrespective of the storms of life you might be facing, irrespective of the challenges of life you might be facing. That storm, you know that it has dissipated. It has fizzled back into the ocean. Because you know him. The Bible says that I may know, Apostle Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I may know him. You need to know him, my dear. My dear friends, you need to know him. If you buy your device, your phone or your tab or your, or your laptop or whatever you buy, or even a car or even a house, anything you buy, and especially when it comes to, the, to manual, what do you do with the manual? You will go through the manual. You read through the manual so that you have an idea of that kind of device you are buying. What are the functions? What are its abilities? What can it deliver for you? What can it not deliver for you? You would need to know. How do you turn it on? How do you turn it off? How do you adjust this? How do you, you, you need to know. So when we talk of this kind of God, you must have an idea. What kind of God is he? That is why we always advise people, don't just join any association, especially 
occultic fraternal associations. Don't just join them. Don't be in a hurry to join them because what they will quickly present to you is a facade. Oh, don't worry. When you come to them, we have connection. We will connect you to this. We will connect you to that. You get jobs. You get this. You get that. You get power. You get money. You... Fine. But the underbelly of the operations for you to get all that they have promised you. Do you know? Most people don't know. They would have entered fully before they realized that they have entered into disaster. Into disaster. So before you join the association, find out. But unfortunately, most of them will not tell you when it's, a, of course, when it's of that kingdom association. The one of the kingdom of God is expressly written in the Bible about who this God is. I'm going to read it for you in a minute. But I'm giving you a preamble of why I am reading this passage to you. So you need to know the pilot that is taking you from one part of the one side of the continent. To another continent that would take hours non-stop you think he will arrive at the airport the same time you are arriving at the airport for him to just start the plane and just go and just take off in the air no he would have been there hours before you arrive and make preparations and do a, 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 a road map of their journey from where they are to their destination. They would have mapped it out from that point of, of uh, uh, takeoff to landing. They would have done the map, they would have done the route, they would have done everything. They know the control towers they, that they will meet along the road that will be telling them move up to higher a bit so that some other plane can come on. They know the, what to do. So they would have mapped out everything. So if you are going to serve this God, you need to know him. Let me read, let me read, maybe I'm talking too much. Let me quickly read uh, Nahum chapter 1, verse 2 to 9, quickly. He said, God is jealous and the Lord revenge, the Lord revenge and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversary. I'm just reading it, just a little bit of, his, of the CV of this God. <laughs> So you have an idea of this kind of God. When you have an idea, you know what he can do and what he will not do. What is capable of doing, what pleases him, what doesn't please him. So you have an idea. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. Listen carefully. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord had his way in the wild wind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Verse 4, he, he, he rebukes the sea. You know, when the storm is raging and there is so much storm in the, uh, in the sea. And it, it, uh, Remember the boat Jesus Christ was on? He rebuked the storm that was coming to torpedo the boat. He said, be still instantly. And this. Immediately the storm ceased. Hallelujah. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up the rivers. Basham languish and Camel and the flower of Lebanon languish. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Ye, the world and all that dwell therein, who can stand before his indignation? You know, when God is angry, who can stand before him? You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it said this God is a consuming fire. When God is angry, everybody disappears. Even Satan and all these demons, they quickly disappear from his presence. They quickly, they quickly run away so that he does not consume them with his fire. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows them that trust in him. You understand? He knows 
who you are. He knows your frame. He knows where you put your hope is, whether your tr trust is in him or your trust is in the millions you have in your bank account or with the occultic or with the stargazer or with your friend or your, with your assets. He knows where your trust is. So God cannot be mocked. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. God is not mocked. You can't deceive God. He knows everything. He can see through your heart. He can see through your mind. Don't forget that it's also, he also indwells you. He stays inside of you. I, I read it to you yesterday or the day before. I said, I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So he indwells you. So he knows everything about your thoughts, your mind, your mindset, what you are thinking and what you are not thinking. Verse 8, but with an overwhelming flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. The last verse I want to read here. What do you, why do you, what do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end of affliction. An utter end. Affliction shall not come a second time. Hallelujah. Talking about affliction, you know, when you face through some certain challenges of life, if you connect yourself with God, he, he makes you to overcome those challenges. That means those challenges are gone. That kind of challenge cannot repeat itself. It's another one that will come. If that challenge keeps repeating itself, that means you are doing something that is bringing that challenge you have been giving victory over. You are doing it again. And it's joy, that is in a sinful manner. And he's bringing the same affliction a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a, a fifth time. That's why you see people turning on one spot in life. This turning the same roundabout and they are not moving forward. Because they keep repeating the same mistake, the same committing the same sin. That is opening the door for that affliction to come again. But the Bible says when he has delivered you from that affliction, he has no right to come back a second time. So, if whatever you are doing that is bringing the affliction into your life, close that door of sin, of disobedience. That is what is bringing affliction. That is what the Bible says, affliction cannot come, it should not come a second time. Close that door. Now, you, this gives you just a jot of an idea of who God is. Now, Based on what I've read here, when we finish, just go back and read again and read and read and read. It gives you how to relate with this God. Like I said to about the, the, the newlywed, a, a couple that gets married today. You know, there are covenants that guide all marriages anywhere in the world. There are agreements. If you do this, I'll do that. If you respect me, I will respect you. If you honor me, I will honor you. If you love me, I will love you. But if somebody is loving and the other one is hating, if somebody is uh, kind and the other one is cruel, you know that kind of relationship cannot stand. You are breaking, somebody is breaking the covenant, the agreement. Sooner than later, that relationship will break down. But when you both, they both ab adhere or abide by the covenants over that marriage, the marriage will be blissful, the marriage will be successful. It does not preclude challenges from coming. Challenges will surely come. No doubt about that. Challenges will come. And it does come to any couple anywhere in the world. But when they abide by the covenants, by the agreement, by the commands that guides a successful marriage, the marriage will stand. It's the same thing with God. A, a relationship with God Remember, even the Bible describes Jesus Christ as the bride. Uh, we are the bride. He is the bridegroom. He describes us as the bride, the wife of the bridegroom. Jesus Christ is the husband man. So, they, there are covenants between us and God himself and Jesus, and the, which we must abide by. When we abide by those covenants, by those agreements, by those commandments, there's no reason why life cannot be blissful. It is in the disobedience of that covenant 
it is in the reneging or not abiding by our own part of the covenant, by our own part of the agreement that brings about this tasteful lifestyle, this tasteful experience in life. Oh, my life is just difficult. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Check yourself. It's not God. Check yourself. Are you abiding by the agreement? Are you obeying his commandments? What does it say concerning where you are today? Are you supposed to be there? Are you to be supposed to be keeping company with this set of people? Are you supposed to be in association with this set of people? Are you supposed to be holding that kind of job you are holding? You call yourself a Christian, but you have a good job as a porn star. You are working in a pornographic shop. <laughs> what kind of Christianity is that? Are you are working as a porn star, but you call yourself a Christian. You know, working in such a place alone opens the door for affliction. Opens the door for affliction. I'm just using an example. I'm not trying to run down any business. I'm just using that as an example. You are in a place where what you are doing, you know you are not supposed to be doing it. You go and be doing some things that will turn you into erotic things. And before you know it, they pull you down and you, 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 are, you, you keep sleeping with them every now and then because of that kind of job you are doing. And you say affliction should not come. Life will not be sweet. See. I've said it before and I'm repeating it again. Anytime you break your side of covenant with God, He opens a door of affliction into your life. God is always abiding by His own side of the agreement, always, ever faithful. But it is we, human beings, that always break our own side of the agreement. And I've said it before. I've said it again now. A couple that breaks, one of them that keeps breaking the covenant and the agreement between what would make that marriage a success will eventually hit the rocks. The marriage will hit the rocks. You break up. Even if you are employed by your employer, if you don't abide by their agreements of terms and conditions by which you have been employed, what would they do? They will sack you. If there's an agreement every day is that you must resume work at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning, but you come in, keep coming to work at 10, 11 every day, and you still want to close by 5 and 6 in the evening, like every other person, sooner than later they will terminate the agreement. Likewise with God, if you are not keeping side of the agreement, what will happen is this. God might not necessarily immediately terminate it. No, he doesn't do that because God is a long-suffering God. Long-suffering, very patient. He will keep waiting, hoping that you will adjust, hoping that you will adjust, hoping that you won't terminate like your boss will terminate your appointment. He will keep, he's very patient. Then he will begin to speak to you gradually. Adjust your life. Adjust this part of your life. Adjust that part of your life. Just I realign, rearrange yourself, re-examine yourself. He will keep opening your eyes of understanding. And if you are wise, you quickly begin to adjust. You quickly begin to adjust so that that relationship can be exciting, can be fruitful, can be successful. And ultimately, that life of yours will be blissful. But if you keep breaking the agreement, now you now open the door for the enemy to encroach into your space. I've told you, anytime you sin against God... Addendum kindly the press the middle paragraph the twice. It will stop for you to read oh, after oh, reading press. Once it will continue to the next page and repeat same till you finish reading thanks. If once it's not your wife or your husband, you go and begin to have sexual immorality, it's called fornication or adultery. You have opened the door very wide for the enemy to say, yes, I'm going to deal with this guy. He can come in, in form of sickness. He can come in form of uh, adversity. 
challenges that you cannot easily surmount. Mm. 